Now, I made a video a while back detailing folding in 3D. You can check that out if you want. But there's a particular concept that I think is important to uh, stress a bit further in a more succinct fashion. And that's the concept of plunge. Now, with respect to a fold, either a, a sin form or an antiform, plunge is simply when a fold carries back into the earth in 3D. So if you were to picture it like this, we've got a 3D block. Of course, on the front face, we have our two-dimensional cross-sectional diagram. So here's an antiform going straight up. And then frequently what we'll see is that, you know, at the, at the, uh, the top of the earth, instead of going straight out um, endlessly, what actually happens is that it'll create a, a plunging feature, meaning that we get a, sort of a, a peak up front, which then plunges into the earth as we go farther and farther back. So, um, of course, my picture isn't perfect, but it would look something like this, where you would have this, to make it more clear, you have this sort of hill-like feature at the top where you've got a, a sort of a peak up front, and then it carries backwards and eventually dies out, as opposed to being something like this, where it would just uh, maintain its shape completely as it goes back. And that's all plunge is. Now, with that, we can call something either a plunging syncline or a plunging anticline. However, it's also useful to know why plunging occurs. And the key thing to recognize here is that the planet is three-dimensional. It doesn't occur on these nice little two-dimensional diagrams. And what happens is, because of that, we have differential stresses, right? That's a key word there, differential, meaning that different stresses um, or different amounts of stress, rather, and in some cases in different directions, will occur at different locations. So let's say if this were one big diagram, right? One big block of the Earth, uh, just, a, just a rectangular prism taken out of it. Then up front, where we have the, the peak of the anticline or the syncline, maybe we've got something uh, like a, a very large amount of stress being applied from all directions. Of course, you've got the confining pressure downwards and then the reaction force. So very large. Maybe, maybe that's um, a total. Each of these arrows represents, on average, maybe m uh, magnitude of force. But then a distance back, say right here at this point, I'll draw smaller arrows. Maybe these are only one half m. So then the corresponding height, you know, you can think of it sort of where force will correspond to a greater height of the, uh, the fold or the greater degree of folding, if you will. So these would only be half as tall. Or in other words, as we go back, um, the degree of folding will be much smaller and therefore it will sort of appear to plunge into the earth. Easy enough. Now one final note is that a plunging anticline, as I drew before, will appear on the surface, you know, it's an expression on the surface. Since an anticline goes up like that, a plunge will appear as, um, as you might expect, a, uh, an upwards pointing uh, arc that then dies down as it goes back, decreasing in height until it plunges completely beneath the surface of the Earth. A syncline, on the other hand, in case you're wondering, looks something like this. Of course, there's our typical syncline structure of a, of a U-shape. And then what it actually looks like is, um, it'll look like, to actually draw up the diagram here, it'll look like at these edges we'll have sort of like mini versions of what the anticline was. And uh, yeah, basically like this. And then both of them will die down as they, as they um, plunge into the Earth's surface as you go farther back. So with this, the anticline, you have sort of a, a, a ridge. And for, these, for the syncline, you have a valley that is bordered by two usually thinner um, ridges, which plunge very much like the anticline into the Earth. So that's all I wanted to talk about. Just a clarification, um, a much more concise way of describing a concept I had touched on in a previous video. But plunging is very important to recognize just because it, uh, it is a, it's what happens in the real world. Um, anticlines and synclines don't go on forever, and therefore it's, it's good to know. So hopefully this was informative, otherwise good review. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video. Ciao.